All right, thrill seekers, uh, let's talk about ghost hunting. Oh, yeah. I know you're out there loving phasmophobia, mm -hmm. you know, that awesome blend of co-op horror and ghost hunting and investigations, you know, that keeps you on the edge of your seat. Right. Well, we're diving deep today into a list of 10 games that capture that same phasmophobia magic, but with their own spooky spin. Yeah, you know what's so captivating about phasmophobia? Right. It's it's not just the jump scares. Yeah. It's that that mix of adrenaline and strategy, right? Yeah, you need teamwork, mm. deduction, yeah. and some serious wit yeah. to to survive those encounters with the unknown. Right. And these games that we're going to talk about today, yeah. oh, they tap into that same vein, offering really unique twists on those elements. Exactly. And we've got games, you know, already out there, spooking players silly and some that are lurking just around the corner, just waiting to be unleashed. Right. And trust me, you're going to want to add a few of these to your wish list. Absolutely. Developers have been pushing the boundaries, taking horror to a whole new level. Okay, let's kick things off with Devourer, released back in January 2021. Okay. This one might already be on your radar. Mm -hmm. And if it is, I bet you've got some stories to tell. Oh, yeah. Devourer throws you into a truly terrifying scenario, right? Yeah. You and up to three friends okay. have to stop a possessed cult leader from completing this ritual. Mm -hmm. And this isn't some happy-go-lucky ceremony. Right. We're talking about a ritual that could drag your soul straight to hell. Intense, right? Yeah. But that's where those phasmophobia vibes come in. Exactly. You've got to work together and navigate these creepy maps. We're talking farmhouses, asylums, you name it. Yeah. And use your wits to outsmart those demonic forces. Mm -hmm. It's got that classic co-op feel, and, and players are raving about its intensity. And what really stands out to me is the variety of those maps. Right. Each one has its own terrifying atmosphere. Its own unique challenges. Yeah. You're not just stuck in one haunted house. You yeah. Know, it keeps the experience fresh and terrifying. Now buckle up for our next game, Demonologist, which dropped uh, just this past September. Ooh, very recent. And get this, it's built on Unreal Engine 5. Wow. So the graphics are absolutely mind-blowing. I mean, we're talking hyper-realistic environments, mm -hmm. shadows that play tricks on your eyes, and character models that will make you question what's real and what's not. Yeah. I, you know, the visuals are stunning. You're right. Yeah. But it's the gameplay that really sets Demonologist apart. Okay. We're not just like identifying spirits here. Mm. We're talking full on exorcisms. Oh, wow. You've got to use a whole range of equipment, ENF readers, spear boxes, crucifixes to investigate, gather evidence, and then perform the exorcism ritual itself. Oh, and here's the kicker. The jump scares and events are randomized. White. You could play the same map five times and have a completely different experience each time. Talk about replay value. Right, that unpredictability keeps attention high. Yeah. You're constantly on edge, never knowing what's going to jump out at you next. It's a master class in keeping players on the edge of their seats. Okay, fellow ghost hunters, let's talk about Ghost Exile, which arrived in early 2022. Okay. Now, the exact player count isn't specified. Hmm. But given its co-op horror theme, it's safe to say you won't be going in alone. Absolutely. Ghost Exile really leans into that sense of teamwork. Yeah. You and your fellow investigators are dropped into these seriously haunted locations. And let me tell you, survival depends on how well you work together. It's not just about identifying the ghost, right? Yeah. It's about outsmarting it. Yes. And that requires some serious coordination. Oh, yeah. One player might be distracting the ghost with an EVP recorder. Right. While another is setting up a salt circle for protection. Smart. It's all about strategy and knowing your role. And just like in Phasmophobia, knowing your ghost types is absolutely key. Oh, yeah. Each ghost has its own unique courts and weaknesses. Yeah. So you've got to adapt your approach accordingly. Right. For example, let's say you're dealing with a banshee. A spirit known for its deadly scream. Those banshees give me the creeps. They are pretty terrifying. Yeah. But here's the thing. They're vulnerable to crucifixes. Okay. So having one handy can mean the difference between surviving the night and, well, becoming another victim. Right. You know. Okay, let's switch gears a bit and talk about fear therapy. Okay. This one stands out because it offers both single player and multiplayer modes. Interesting. With up to four players if you're feeling brave. Okay. It hit the scene in early 2022, and let me tell you, the psychological horror in this one is dialed up to 11. Ooh, I like it. We're not just talking jump scares. Okay. We're talking atmosphere so thick you could cut it with a knife, sounds that make your skin crawl, and a constant feeling of dread that something truly wicked is lurking nearby. If you're the type of player who enjoys a good psychological thriller, right. fear therapy delivers in spades. Yeah. It's about that creeping sense of unease 
the feeling that something is deeply, deeply wrong with the world around you. And the way the game plays with light and shadow, yeah. just brilliant. Oh, yeah. You're constantly on edge. Yeah. Never quite sure what's hiding in the darkness. Imagine this. You're trapped in this sprawling, dilapidated mansion. Right. Not your typical haunted house. Right. You've got puzzles to solve, secrets to uncover. Mm -hmm. And all the while, this demonic entity named, wait for it, Satan. Oh my God. Is on the loose. Yeah. You heard that right, Satan? Just the name sends shivers down my spine. And escaping his clutches isn't easy. No. You need to find specific ritual items scattered throughout the house, all while avoiding his watchful days. And here's where the teamwork element gets really interesting. Right. If one of your teammates gets captured by Satan, Oh no. The others have to rescue them. Oh wow. It adds a whole new layer of urgency and really highlights the importance of communication. Yeah. You've got to work to strategize and move quickly if you want to survive the night. It's not just about your own survival, you're responsible for your teammates. Exactly. Which makes the stakes even higher. Absolutely. You can't just go running off on your own. Right. You need to stick together, communicate, and have a plan. Otherwise, Satan will pitch you off one by one. One by one. Now let's dive into a game that's still making waves in the horror community. Okay. Even though it's relatively new, Remnant Records. Hmm, interesting. This one's another one for four player co-op experience and it's all about investigation. Okay. But with a really unique twist, you see Remnant Records uses something called procedurally generated narratives. Oh, wow. Which means... Every ghost you encounter has its own unique backstory. Ooh, I love that. It's not just a generic specter with a grudge. Right. It's a fully fleshed out entity with a history motivations and a story to tell. So you're not just dealing with some random spooky apparition. Right. You're dealing with a spirit that has a reason for haunting. Yeah. A story that unfolds as you investigate. It's like you're piecing together a puzzle uncovering the truth behind their torment. And that's what makes this game so immersive and so replayable. One playthrough you might encounter the spirit of a heartbroken lover driven to madness by grief. Oh wow. The next, it could be a vengeful spirit seeking retribution for a past wrong. Right. Each ghost has its own personality, its own quirks, and its own unique way of interacting with the environment and the players. Wow. And that, my friend, makes every investigation feel fresh and unpredictable. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. You know, speaking of unique ghost stories, that seamless transition reminds me of this is a ghost. Okay. Teamwork is key here. Right. But what sets it apart is the sheer variety of ghosts you'll encounter. Ooh, tell me more. I love a good ghost menagerie. What makes these specters so special? Well, each ghost in This is a Ghost boasts its own set of behaviors and abilities. Okay. Some might be shy, you know, they're lurking in the shadows. Right. While others are aggressive, uh -huh. eager to make their presence known, forcefully. Yeah. This means you can't just rely on one strategy. You'll need to adapt on the fly, which let's be honest, adds to the thrill. It's like one minute you're dealing with a whispery phantom tiptoeing around to avoid detection, and the next, bam, you're facing off against a poltergeist who's tossing furniture around like it's nothing. Precisely. That unpredictability is what keeps this is a ghost. So engaging, you never quite know what to expect. And that adrenaline rush is addictive. Okay, so we've got ghosts with backstories, ghosts with attitude. What about ghosts in a post-apocalyptic world? That's where Demon Somnia comes in, right? You got it. Demon Somnia is a co-op multiplayer experience set in a world ravaged by nuclear disaster. Oh, okay. Talk about setting the mood. Wow. Imagine dense forests shrouded in an eerie silence, dilapidated mansions filled with the ghosts of the past. Uh -huh. And you're exploring it all while wearing gas masks. Oh. Protect yourself from the lingering radiation. Gas masks in a horror game. That's a new one but I can see how it would add to the creepy factor. Like you're constantly reminded of the world's decay. So it's not just ghosts we're dealing with here. Nope. Do you insomnia blends psychological horror with survival mechanics? Mm -hmm. You're scavenging for resources, trying to stay alive in this hostile environment. All while of course, demons lurk in the shadows, ready to pounce. So it's like phasmophobia meets a post-apocalyptic survival game. Yeah. That's a combo I didn't know I needed in my life. Right. Speaking of things I need in my life, Let's talk about Project Unknown. This one isn't out yet, but it's on my radar for July 12th, 2024. Okay. 
What's got everyone buzzing about it? Well, Project Unknown is generating hype for its focus on unique character abilities. Oh, okay. You and your team up to four players. Mm -hmm. Each take on a specific role with its own strengths and weaknesses. So it's not just about teamwork. It's about knowing your strengths and using them strategically. I love that. Exactly. Imagine one player specializing in tech, setting up elaborate surveillance systems to track the ghosts, while another is a gifted communicator, able to coax information from even the most reticent spirits. This adds a layer of strategic depth, forcing you to coordinate your efforts and leverage your individual skills to overcome the challenges. And I've heard whispers about the graphics. Apparently, Project Unknown is aiming for a level of immersion that'll leave players speechless. Let's just say that developers are pushing the boundaries of visual storytelling. They're promising an experience that's not only terrifying, but also incredibly beautiful in a haunting, ethereal way. All right, I'm officially adding that to my wish list. Okay, shifting gears a bit, let's talk about Overnight. Okay. This multiplayer co-op game sounds like it really captures the unpredictable nature of ghost hunting. Uh-huh. Tell me what makes this one stand out. Well, Overnight throws you into a world where you truly never know what you're going to face. Okay. Each session features multiple ghosts and their types are totally randomized. Hold on. Multiple ghosts in one location. Now that's just asking for trouble. Oh, it's definitely a recipe for chaos. You might walk into a location expecting a run-of-the-mill specter, only to find yourself facing a demonic entity and a mischievous poltergeist all vying for your attention. Oh my gosh. And you can't forget about the equipment overnight doesn't skimp on the paranormal investigation tools. So we're talking EMF readers, spirit boxes, all the classics. Absolutely. You've got a full arsenal at your disposal to communicate with spirits, gather evidence, and hopefully make it out in one piece. But remember, it's not just about using the tools. It's about using them strategically. You need to think on your feet, adapt to the situation, and work together if you want to survive the night. I'm starting to see a theme here. Teamwork strategy and a healthy dose of fear. Huh. Now for our final game, we've got Pacify, a game that's been around for a while but is still going strong thanks to ongoing updates from the developers. Oh, impressive. And this one's got a twist. It offers single-player co-op and PvP modes. Now that's variety. Whether you prefer to face your fears alone, team up with friends, or even go head-to-head -head against other players, Pacify has something for everyone. But no matter how you choose to play, the core experience remains the same. You're trying to pacify a very angry, very possessed girl named Amelia. A possessed girl, huh? Yeah. <sighs> that sounds intense. Tell me more about this Amelia and why she needs pacifying. Oh, picture this. A creepy old house shrouded in darkness and at the heart of it all is Amelia. She's not your typical ghost. She's a force of nature fueled by rage and supernatural power. And the only way to calm her down to pacify her is to find and burn these special dolls marked with her name. Okay, that sounds creepy, but also kind of sad. Like, what happened to this girl? Why is she so angry? That's the beauty of Pacify. It leaves a lot to the imagination. You're piecing together clues, trying to understand Amelia's story, while also trying to survive her wrath. So it's got that mystery element, that psychological thriller vibe that keeps you guessing. And I bet the PvP mode is just wild. Oh, it's absolute chaos. Yeah. Imagine trying to pacify Amelia while also trying to outwit and outmaneuver other players who are trying to do the same thing. Yeah. It's a recipe for some truly hilarious and terrifying moments. Wow. We've covered some seriously spooky ground today. <laughs> From demonic rituals in Devour to the post-apocalyptic chills of demon somnia. Yeah. And who could forget Amelia and her possessed doll burning antics in Pacify? Each game offers a unique take on the ghost hunting genre, proving there are endless ways to get your scare on. You know what fascinates me is how these games tap into our primal fears. Uh -huh. The unknown, the darkness, the things that go bump in the night. Yeah. But they also offer a sense of empowerment, you know? Right. We get to face those fears head on, yeah. armed with knowledge, strategy, and maybe a crucifix or two. You know, you're right. It's like facing your feels in a safe space with friends by your side. And it makes you think, what would your ideal ghost hunting experience look like? Imagine if you could combine elements from all these games. What kind of terrifying masterpiece would you create? That's a great question. Would you go for a sprawling open world setting, like a haunted city you could explore for hours? Oh, yeah. Or would you prefer a series of intricately designed locations, each with its own chilling backstory? Ooh, I'd love a game where the environment changes dynamically based on the ghost's mood. Oh. Like, imagine the walls bleeding with ectoplasm when the spirit gets angry. Oh, well. Wow. Or the temperature plummeting as it draws closer. Now that's an idea. And what about the tech? Would you stick with classic ghost hunting gadgets, or would you introduce some 
futuristic elements. Yeah. Maybe a holographic projector that recreates the ghost's final moments. Right. Or a device that allows you to temporarily trap the spirit in a containment field. Okay. My mind is officially blown. <laughs> the possibilities are endless. And that's what makes the genre so exciting. There's always something new to discover a new way to push the boundaries of fear and imagination. And that's what we love about it, right? The thrill of the unknown, the challenge of outsmarting these supernatural entities, and the satisfaction of surviving the night and living to tell the tale. Exactly. So, dear listeners, we want to hear from you. What elements from these games would you combine to create your ultimate ghost hunting experience? Share your ideas, your dream scenarios, your wildest fears. Let's keep this conversation going. Until next time, stay spooky, stay curious, and happy hunting. 